Hello, my name is Thiago Davi Curibuzarello. In this video, I'll show you the procedure for tuning a digital proportional resonant controller for a grid connected inverter. I'm here with four files. One is my paper that I published in IEEE SPAC conference in 2018 in Singapore. So I'll show you some of the most important points in this paper. I'm here with this book, which is a good book, and then I'll show you some equations that I use as background for my design procedure. I'm here with the MATLAB Simulink files that I'll show you also how the procedure for tuning the controller. And finally, I'm here with the simulation, the grid connected inverter with the digital current controller plus PLL plus PWM. So let's get started. And oh, before we get started, I'd like to say that all my all the files of this research are freely available on my web page. The link for my web page is listed on the description of this video. So you can go there and download the files from MATLAB and Simulink for this research. Okay, so the procedure for turning a digital proportional resonant controller begins with the structure. If you go back here in my paper, this is the simple structure. And actually, this is one of the simplest way to tune a PR controller. It's just a half bridge inverter, um, L filter. This is the resistance of the inductor. So have here the grid and have here two DC sources. I'm showing you this in this case because this is the simplest way to inject active power into the grid using a proportional resonant controller. But you can use also a full bridge inverter using only one DC source. The procedure will be the same, okay? So this is the point. I have here just a half bridge inverter, uh, output filter made by an inductor, a, vo a current sensor, a voltage sensor, and this is the digital environment where I have here the proportional resonant controller. So I'm having here a reference, which is a sinusoid reference and in phase with this grid. It is not showed here, but I'm using this voltage. I, I included in a PLL, I'll show you later in Simulink, and this signal is generating this reference, okay? But the meaning of uh, the message on, at this point is that this reference here is a sinusoid waveform with such an amplitude, and they are, this is in phase with the grid voltage. So the design of the proportional resonant controller falls into the obtaining of these parameters, Kp, Ki, and also this digital filter. You need to define in order to design these controllers, three parameters, the constant gain, the integral gain, and also the digital filter, which is actually a notch filter. The values I'm using, I'll show you later in MATLAB. So the, the procedure here begins with, let me try this, put side by side, in order to give you some discussions. So I have here, the initialization, the sampling parameters, the grid connecting inverter system parameters. I have here the inductor current, the inductor, the value of the inductor, the VDC, the peak of the grid, the frequency, and also the sensor gains that I'm using, and the switching frequency and the nominal power. Okay. These values are based on some criteria of projects, so you can have your own values. And remember that these values they are based on some criteria. For instance, the inductor current I'm using here is 10 milliamp milliampere, and this is because of some criteria, like I said. So, in order to define this value, you can use any kind of math. I won't get, get you get into details. This is out of the scope of this video, but just summarize: you can compute this inductance here according to the maximum hippo you will, in the current that you allow to transfer to the grid or even in the voltage drop that you allow to lose here according to this voltage here okay some books and some authors says that the, that you can drop 10% or 15% 20% of voltage across this related to this value here so you can decide what math you are using to compute the 
inductor of the output filter. So we have two criteria: the maximum ripple in the current that you are transferring to this, and also the voltage drop that must be lower than 10%. The VDC voltage is actually the half of this because I'm using here half of the VDC voltage and it's quite lower, quite higher than the peak voltage. I have also criteria for that, but you can check later on other materials. An interesting point here, I'm using the sensor gain, the current sensor gain in order to compute these parameters. This is not actually really found in books and papers the considerations of the sensor gains. In this case, I'm using it. I have here the switching frequency, which is 30K. is actually acceptable according to the inverter power. I'm using here 1K, 1 kilowatts for the, the inverter. So it is acceptable to use 30K as switching frequency. Okay, so the procedure is also actually to compute these gains and the digital filter. Returning here to the book, to the to my paper, I'm having here, you can read later in details, but I have two equations here that compute the constant for Kp and Ka. And this constant here, notice that I'm using such equations. And this equation comes from this book here. If you have this book, I bought it. I have it in, in printed version. If you go here to page 237, let me see, yes, chapter 9, you have here a linear control approaches for DC and AC power converter. You can read this chapter later and you see that those values, those equations I extracted from this book. If you go back, go back and go down, i sorry, go down, go down until this point here. Here there are a lot of explanations for the proportional resonant controller, but the point is this chapter here, 9.3.3.3. It's a polynomial math, so you can try later to understand this. And finally, this math here results on these equations here. So you have the Kp and Ka for a for the resonant controllers and notice that this that has no sensor gain but I'm using sensor gains in this and it works pretty well okay, I have the both of them considering that I'm using the sensor gain if I return it to my script I have here these equations for Kp and Ka so Actually, therefore, these are the first step to compute the proportional resonant controller using these formulas to compute the constant for Kp and Ka. And notice that this is dependent only on the resonant frequency you want, the inverter inductance, the resistance of the inductor, and this factor here, it is defined right here. Let's see where it's defined. Yes, this actually is a dumping factor that you decide in terms of project. Okay. And I have here C is equal to this is my damping factor that I choose. Returning to the main structure, using those equations you get this value and this value here. It is remaining this one. This is a notch filter. Okay. Because here is a sinusoidal, a poor, a merely sinusoidal waveform. I mean, a clean sinusoidal waveform. You want this being you know, circulating through this path here. So you have here um, a really clean sinusoidal waveform. And then you are comparing to some feedback current here, generating the error signal, which may contain not only the sinusoidal reference, but it may contain some harmonics, distortions, anyway. And the purpose of the proportional resonant controller, this path here, is to withdraw only the fundamental component, only the frequency representing this reference, which is actually the same frequency of this. If you measure later, you designed the, the resonant path here, 
From this point, you need to extract and you need to see just a sinusoidal waveform and tune it at the frequency you are using here. In our case, since you are injecting active power, this harmonic filter here will be tuned at 60 Hz. I'll show you later the procedure for that. That filter may be defined by this equation here, which is just a digital filter with con co uh, constant coefficients. And the point is how to compute these coefficients here. And the procedure is just taking an analog notch filter. This is the transfer function for an analog transfer, analog resonant filter, and discretize it according to any method. In my case, I used the Z transform through back, backward Euler approximation. And this is the procedure for that resulting on these coefficients here. I have here all now the coefficients for computing the resonant filter for the resonant path. I have here all the coefficients that I'm using in this case. Going on here in my paper, I have a table showing the parameters of the system and later I can compute to you all the values for those coefficients b0 from and a2 okay so we have here kp and ka also according to these equations and i have all of this included here design the resonant future have here all the equations resulting finally on these two factors here b for the numerator and a for the denominator that's what i have so let's return to the main charge. I'm using the two formulas from that book to compute this, and this is computed only by discretizing an analog filter, which is actually a notch filter. It is a filter that extracts only the frequency in you, you are tuned. Let's go on. That's the paper. You can check later carefully try to understand these equations, but actually, in fact, they are just a procedure for computing these equations here. Let's go to MATLAB. I have all the equations here. If I run this code, I'll plot some charts here. Let's try to see what I'm telling you here. So, figure one, this is the frequency response of the resonant path. If you check here, you see that at 60 Hz, the component is multiplied by 0 dB, which is equal to 1. From all components that you have right here, let's return. For all components you have right here, just one will be passes through this point here, because uh, uh, right here, because you have here only at the 60 Hz being multiplied by 1. All the remaining are multiplied by 0. Let's see this one. Okay, all, all of them are multiplied by a large number, which means they are being eliminated practically because you have here minus 75 dB, which is really large. And just one component at 60 Hz is multiplied by 1, which is 0 dB. All the remaining frequencies keeps eliminated from the signal. This is the point right here. And if I'm going back here to Simulink, I have here the grid connect inverter. Notice that this DC voltage is equal to 225 volts. I have here the inductor, uh, half bridge. I have here the grid and the measurements. I'm also considering here the current sensor gain and the voltage sensor gain. All of these controllers are digital. I'm using here a zero order holder just to pretend to be a, a ADC converter. So it makes the hole for a ADC converter for a digital signal processing. And this is actually where I have everything. I'm using here the voltage to compute the reference. At this point here, I have the reference. I'm using here a three-phase PLL, but I'm nulling the phases B and C just to 
become this a single phase. I have here a code for this PLL. You can download on my web page and check it later carefully. After computing the reference, they are compared with the feedback. And then I have here already the values that I computed using those equations. Let's return here to MATLAB. You can check here how much is KP, KA, actually B and A, all the variables that I need on the controller. They are right here, KP, KA, and the discrete future here, B and A from that one. They are summed, they have here a saturation just to make this controller not to saturate. And also here now is generating the PWM with two levels using that one. This is actually really simple, it's just a grid connect an inverter with half bridge inverter, two VDC sources. I have here two variables being measured and computed here the reference and the gate signal. I have here also some blocks for measurements just to check the efficacy of this procedure. Let's run this simulation. Let's see. The first thing I'd like to check is these two variables here the inverter current and the reference current. The inverter current is multiplied by 10 just to be compatible with the reference. If I check this, I can see here that the output current is following its variable, its reference signal with no or if negligible stead state error. You see here that the green one uh, the blue one is the reference and the yellow is the output current. Actually they are quite good It following the reference with 10 amps here. I also applied here a change in the, in the reference. So you have here a sinusoidal current, a sinusoidal signal and suddenly these surfers are 180 phase shift in order to check the behavior of the output current. And we see here that it follows its reference signal as well after some transitory period here. Okay. And this is so in steady state, we also see that it is following the reference with no problem. I also can check here the voltage grid and also the inverter current. Let's see just to see that behavior and we can check out the PLL here. So we can check here, see here that the current is sinusoidal in phase with the voltage grid, the grid voltage, which means that I'm transferring active power to the grid and that step change I did, it was right here. It was in phase and suddenly the reference changes and we see here that after some half of cycle, the PLL is synchronized again and we can see that the current is reversed. It means that I was injecting active power to the grid and suddenly I'm consuming active power to the grid. In this case, we suppose that these sources here are able to hold the energy coming from the grid. So I'm injecting current and I'm receiving and draining current just to check the behavior of the proportional resonant controller. And we see here that the error is the signal here, actually is quite sinusoidal already. And of course, when you check after the proportional resonant controller, we can see here a sinusoidal waveform at 60 Hz, showing the efficacy of this controller here and this procedure and I'm using just one controller tuned at 60 Hertz but here in MATLAB I designed also another controller tuned at 60 at, at 300 Hertz and the result is this one you can 
just replicate such a formula to another frequency. In my case, it's 200, 300. I have here a proportional resonant controller for 60 Hz and also for a 300 Hz in case you want such behavior. In this case, you have two references. Okay, you can try later on Simulink. And just to wrap up this this explanation, let's see what have we have more. Let's close this. You can plot also. Let me see if I have here. All right, just that. Okay, that is that's the explanation I have for this proportional resonant controller. Summarizing, in the my paper here, we just need to have the computation of three parts: KP, KA, KE, and this resonant path here, which is based on some equations. The equations for that: KP is right here, KI is right here. And the coefficients for the filter are right here, B0, B1, B2, A0, A1, and A2. And they are located right here, KP, KI, and the discrete filter. Hope you understood. Let me know if you have some question. Feel free to download the files available on my webpage. And let me know if you have some questions. Thank you for watching this video.